Hey guys, it's finally the time of the year again where Black Friday and the holidays are coming up. And you know what that means, time to spend your money and make your wallet cry. But seriously speaking, this is also a very good time to take advantage of the deals and build yourself the new desk setup you've always wanted in your room. And I've got a really exciting one to share right behind me that I've been planning for like the past month. And since I am a broke university student myself, I decided it would be a good idea to make this setup as cheap as possible without sacrificing much on usability. So everything in a desk setup minus the computer will cost a grand total of under $700. And that's without the potential sales that'll come soon. Instead of sitting here blocking the desk though, I am going to vlog this showcase from my point of view so we can get up close and personal. Also, thank you so much Cinco for sending over these wireless camera microphones to use for the video. It's called the G2 and it'll make this video so much more convenient to shoot. I'll leave a link in the description too, but uh, back to the video. Hey, it's me again. So the theme we decided to go for was a fully matte black desk setup for that clean and minimal look that I know a lot of you guys really like, especially when I ran my Twitter and Instagram polls. I also bought these new posters just to match the setup for this video, and I think they honestly look pretty sick. But also, I know you guys have a lot of different needs, so I will be listing alternatives for the peripherals I mentioned in this video, and also I will have my affiliate links down in the description, so be sure to use that to help support my channel at no extra cost to you. Alright, excuse the messy room, but let's get started with the desk. The trend these past few years since COVID started was having a standing desk which is supposedly better for your health and posture. Having never tried one before, I decided to go with this black standing desk from Ergear, who is also the sponsor of this video. Now, before you guys click off the video and say, oh, it's another sponsored video, this desk is actually legit and really affordable. So Ergear told me they haven't finalized the pricing yet as there will be a lot of upcoming promotions for the Black Friday and the holiday season, but for the sake of this video, it's $265 on Amazon right now. So we're going to use that for the video. But again, it's not the final pricing. But also, everything coming out of my mouth is my own opinion, and they didn't tell me what to say, so uh, you can be sure to trust me. And also, you'll definitely want to stay for all the awesome budget peripherals that I worked really hard to pick out for you guys. But anyways, going back to the desk, the installation process was surprisingly easy and frustration free. It came in one relatively small box that was clearly beaten up by FedEx, but I appreciated how everything was well protected and neatly labeled with numbers and letters when I opened everything up. They also included a booklet of instructions that was pretty easy to follow, and also have a video for you to reference if you do prefer that. And now that the desk is fully built, it feels solid and surprisingly premium despite its lower price tag. Its fully metal legs and motors are rated for a load capacity of 176 pounds, which will be able to lift any monitors, any speakers, and peripherals you put on the desk with ease. Ergear does say that this has been tested 50,000 times, so take that for what you will. Now about the actual height adjustment, the desk does do it smoothly without any sort of jittering and it's pretty quiet too so you won't have a problem using it while trying to sneak up at night. The lowest setting actually starts at 28.35 inches or 72 centimeters for my fellow Canadians which is a comfortable sitting height and a standard among all desks. At its high setting, it can go up to 46.46 inches or 118 centimeters which should be able to accommodate most heights. And as a reference, I'm 6 feet tall and I use a desk at around 44 and a half inches or 113 centimeters. And luckily, this desk remains steady and doesn't shake around even at its extended form, which is good because I actually lean on it quite a bit. The little control panel also allows you to set up three memory functions, which is very convenient to use. And lastly, you might have noticed the stands and the jars, which is one of the features of this specific desk model. It's genius because it allows the monitors to sit more at eye level for a more comfortable viewing experience, and also positions your speakers at ear level for a better listening experience. As a bonus, you also get these little included drawers to help you store some random objects, and you don't even need to buy a third-party monitor stand anymore, which definitely saves on cost. There are also some rubber grommets on the back to help with cable management, which is convenient. Now, moving on to the monitor, which is really the only other big expense. The monitor I have over here is the Inichin 27C1U, which is an amazing option for anyone looking for a 4K color accurate monitor, but I'll give alternatives if that's not what you're looking for. This monitor uses a 27 inch 4K IPS display, which means it's incredibly sharp with all text, photos, and videos, in addition to being colorful and not washed out from different viewing angles like cheaper VA 
panels. It has a max brightness of 400 nits as well, which is brighter than most standard monitors, and also covers 98% of the DCI P3 gamut. It also comes factory calibrated with its own unique color calibration with a delta E value of under 2, which if you don't know what that means, means it's really good for color accuracy, which is important for creators like me or anyone that does any sort of art or graphics. The included stand is also great with height adjustments, tilt adjustments, swivel adjustment with the ruler on the bottom for some reason, and even being able to rotate a full 90 degrees, which is really useful. And lastly, there are a multitude of ports in the back with a USB-C port for connecting your laptop and charging with up to 65 watts of power, two USB-A 3.0 ports, one USB-B, two HDMI 2.0 ports, one DisplayPort 1.4 port, and lastly, one 3.5mm auto jack. Now, just as I'm filming, it seems like they came out with a new version of this monitor without the USB-A ports, but it comes in at a cheaper price of $280, which puts the total cost of the setup at $545 so far. Now, I get a lot of you may be gamers, so you don't really care about the resolution or the color accuracy of the monitors, so after doing a little bit of research and watching a bunch of YouTube videos, Videos, I think the Gigabyte M27 series of monitors is really affordable and great for the price, so it's definitely something you should look into. Now, next to the monitors, we have a pair of incredible speakers that still shock me to this day. These cute little speakers are called the Creative Pebbles, and this specific model is version 2, which retails for only $25. Despite it being only $25, it's actually considered one of the best computer speakers under $100 on many websites, and for good reason too. With the high gain mode switched on, these tiny speakers can deliver a peak power of 16 watts, which is really loud and can actually fill up my entire room. I don't know how well this will translate over to my microphones, but let me show you what I mean about the volume of these speakers and a microphone mic clip, so you might want to lower your headphone volume. And because of the way these are designed, they have a natural 45 degrees of elevation, which positions the audio straight at your ears, making it sound better. And with its 2-inch drivers, the sound is clear and full without being muffled, which is all you can really ask for at this price point. The bass is weak, but I much rather take clarity over anything else. And when I say impressed, I mean I'm really impressed, because I am quite an audiophile myself, owning a bunch of high-end audio gear, and these get my stamp of approval, which means they're good. And finally for connection, these use USB-C, but if you don't have that, they do include a USB-A adapter in the package. You'll also need to use the standard 3.5mm cable as well. Also, if you do want Bluetooth, the version 3 of these speakers actually have them at just 15 bucks more, which is also an incredible deal. Now, for the alternatives, if you are willing to spend more money to upgrade to a much better listening experience, I suggest you jump straight to bookshelf speakers and skip those cheap Logitech systems. The two I recommend are the Edifier MR4 Studio Monitors and the Edifier R1280T bookshelf speakers, which are probably the two best speakers at that price range, as proven by a lot of YouTube reviews and online articles. I myself have owned the Edifier R1700BTs and now the big boy S1000DBs and they're absolutely amazing so I can definitely confidently recommend Edifier speakers. But anyways, going back to these speakers, they come in at a cost of $25 only, which puts the setup cost at around $570. Now, moving on to some peripherals. This one was actually a hard one because there were just so many options to choose from. There were a couple categories the keyboard needed to check off though. First, the keyboard needed to be mechanical as I think it really adds on to the typing experience when you're at home. And second, it needed to be Bluetooth compatible and work with Mac OS since we all use different computers. The one I ended up choosing was the Dravo Caliber V2 Pro, and it's actually pretty great coming in at 55 USD or for some reason $40 Canadian. It's built fully out of plastic and feels really light, but it's not cheap to the point where it feels like it's going to fall apart. There's also a singular switch on the bottom of the keyboard to turn it on and off, and also a USB-C port to charge the keyboard or plug it into your computer. And as I mentioned earlier, there's Bluetooth 5.1 technology that actually allows the keyboard to connect to up to five different devices. This is super useful for keeping your desk decluttered, but if you are doing any any sort of gaming, definitely make sure to plug it in so there's no latency and to take advantage of the N key rollover. There's also a built-in PC and Mac profile switcher, which means it works beautifully with my MacBook and all the bottom keys are in the right position. I got Otemu Red switches because they're on sale and they feel and sound as expected. I'm not a big fan 
fan of linears, but these do get the job done and don't sound as cheap as you think, especially the stabilizers. Here's a sound test though for you keyboard nerds. And last but not least, there's also RGB for the keys and on the side of the keyboard if you are into that sort of thing. And as for alternatives, the Red Dragon K530 Pro is like the most popular option at this $60 price point. But for some reason in Canada, the keyboard was like double the cost of this Dravo keyboard. So I decided to review this instead for the sake of my Canadian peeps. But also if you are looking for a slight upgrade and don't want to go down the rabbit hole of going into the expensive custom keyboard game, definitely check out Keychron's wide selection of keyboards as they got some really good ones as well. But anyways, this keyboard has all the features you need at around $55, which puts the total setup cost at $625. And for the final peripheral, we got the mouse. The G305 is a very popular option, but the Razer Orchi V2 improves on that with better components and Bluetooth connectivity, which is a definite must in my books because no one likes to carry a dongle around. It's super compact, but comfortable to use and extremely lightweight too at under 60 grams without the battery. Speaking about that, it's rated up to 950 hours on Bluetooth and up to 425 hours with the hyperspeed dongle, which is just absolutely insane. And for Mac users like me, Razer Synapse doesn't support Mac OS, but I can confirm that all the buttons and functions work as intended. If you do want softer support though, the Rival 3 Wireless from SteelSeries is another good choice. I personally own the SteelSeries Air X3 and can vouch for it being awesome. But anyways, this mouse is constantly on sale for $40, which is an absolute steal, putting the cost of this whole setup at $665. And to wrap it up, we got some decorations. On the left, this sleek and minimal looking desk lamp is the Globe Electric 52899 Pratt Lamp. It's um just a lamp, I guess, and does exactly what the name implies. Be a lamp. It can move up and down and also can swivel. A good tip if the light bulb you put in is too bright is to stuff some parchment paper or even a paper towel in there just to diffuse the light better. Globe also has like a huge catalog of awesome looking designs on Amazon, so I suggest you browse through them and find one that you really like. And also, is it just me or do like modern LED lamps look really, really ugly with like no sense of design? But anyways, this lamp is surprisingly only $25, which puts the total setup cost at $690. And last but not least, the most essential object in any setup or frankly any youtuber setup the infamous ikea vegka plant which shall accompany you through the ups and downs of your life for a low low cost of six dollars putting the final cost of this entire setup at 696 dollars and i guess that's it for this desk setup video i hope you enjoyed this vlog slash pov style and found some cool new peripherals to inspire your very own desk setup Definitely feel free to ask questions about anything you have down below. And of course, all affiliate links will be posted in the description, which will help me a lot at no extra cost to you. Also, go follow my socials everywhere at Kung Fu Gadjitsu, and make sure to tag me if I inspired you today with this desk setup. And on that note, don't forget to smash that like and subscribe button. Have a good one, and I'll see you guys in the next one.